After 68 days of non-stop building, the 100 million obsidian square above 2B2T spawn is complete. This is one of the largest structures on the server. You might be confused about the purpose of this project, how it was made, and how we could finish it in such a short time. Today, you'll learn about a project that brought many players together and how it could revolutionize future Obsidian projects. So how did this project even start? Well, to save some time, I've already made a video about the beginning of this project, but here are the notable events. This project was started on November 10th, 2021 by me. After scrolling the 2B2D subreddit, I kept seeing posts about Obsidian logos above spawn. I eventually got annoyed and wondered, what would happen if someone filled a huge Obsidian platform above spawn that got rid of all logos? After talking to a player named redstoner 2 b 2 t who supplied the obsidian during the beginning of the project and the revival of my group, Conquest, Redstoner found a location to deliver the first batch of obsidian. Along the way, Conquest members would use a hacked client called Lambda Client with modules like Auto Obsidian, which allowed players to mine ender chests and convert them into obsidian and the most critical module, Highway Tools, which creates obsidian highways without user input. When we sorted everything out, we began moving obsidian closer to spawn, but then there was a problem. During the project's planning, another group run by the players Oofplux and Dino underscore 2B2T wanted to deface all obsidian logos at spawn. With the help of bots, they were largely successful. When they caught onto my project, Oofplux was against this idea, saying that it wasn't feasible and burnout would be likely. After negotiating, both groups decided that while their project was being constructed, my project would remain within a region in the Spawn Mason's logo. Progress for the first few days went well. We mainly started at the very top of the region, and it was completed in a few days. A player named Quaz would create an obsidian mining station so players could just use obsidian shulkers and make placement faster. Cody Smile 11 and I would start at the bottom region and make good progress. As more progress was occurring, more players began to get motivated. Eventually, Oofplux's project was completed on July 11, 2022, after mining 9 million obsidian. This allowed Conquest members to go outside the region, and more mining stations will be constructed, allowing a player named 6WJ to place 250,000 obsidian in just 3 days. From July 2nd to the 27th, the player Reaper's Patrol started on a grid system. This system was a grid made of 1000 by 1000 block obsidian sectors. These sectors filled up the entire 10k by 10k area of the project. However, with this much obsidian being placed, our first batch of obsidian was about to run out. When I messaged Redstoner for another batch, there was a problem. Microsoft shut down unmigrated accounts. He said we would have to wait 18 days for the next batch as his accounts had to be migrated. This slowed progress, but we still had the motivation to keep going. On July 31st, 2022, my video about the project was uploaded, which got many more players to join Conquest and help with the project. On August 1st, we were on the brink of running out of Obsidian. If we didn't get Obsidian soon, players wouldn't have anything to do, thus making them bored and leaving. I would scramble and message some players if they had any obsidian to spare, but no one did. It seemed like the project was starting to fall apart, but then I got a message. A player named Freedom Holland messaged me on Discord about the logistics of how many shulkers and pickaxes were needed for the project and wanted to help supply materials. I set up a location to drop off materials and we agreed to meet the next day. On August 2nd, we completely ran out of obsidian. Since I didn't want members to lose motivation, I bought Obsidian from Knock Shop, my first time buying from a shop on 2 b 2 t 29 Ender Chest Shulkers, which is about 400,000 Obsidian is a lot, but it wasn't enough to last a day. I dropped off the Shulkers at a mining station near Spawn, and our members got to work. A few hours later, Freedom Holland made his way to the location and supplied around 20 double chests filled with Ender Chest Shulkers. The next day, the Knock Shop owners supplied us with a few double chests of obsidian shulkers. A few hours later, Freedom Holland came up with an automatic mining station and filled the shulkers with obsidian. For the following few days, progress was made, and then on August 5th, 
Reaper's Patrol completed the 10k by 10k grid, which would become extremely handy later in the project. A new Discord server was created, named Conquest Logistics. This allowed progress to be carried out and documented in private. For the following few weeks, many members placed tons of obsidian. One player even placed obsidian at the airport. However, many players needed clarification about where to place obsidian, and the project required more logistics for obsidian placement. So on August 17th, I sorted everyone into four squads for each corner. Each squad would have a squad leader and four plus players. Each team would start from one corner and spread out to the other, paving one sector at a time. For example, Squad Alpha would begin on A1, and once that sector was filled, they would split up and start on sectors A2 and B1. Once the outer region was complete, each team would keep repeating for each layer until the square was full. In addition to squads, a player named Ice Tank had been working on a program allowing bots to place obsidian. Ice Tank was already experienced with programming bots with the program Mind Flayer and had already made a bot prototype to build obsidian logos on 9B90, but it was never finished. The closest thing higher up Conquest members thought possible was automating the module Highway Tools, but Ice Tank wanted to go a step further. He wanted a bot that could run on a VPS so he wouldn't have his PC running at all times. As Ice Tank configured his program, the first versions of the bot for this project could only build a simple single row of obsidian at a time. There was still a lot to implement before this program could be released to placers. Squads turned out to be a flawed system. Only a small portion of players from each squad participated, and only a tiny portion of those players was dedicated to placing. Progress was still made, but as more time passed, school and work started to deter players from placing. During this time, a player named Fujisauce was the most active player. He placed 2 million obsidian in 2 days, completely alone with 2 accounts. On September 4th, a Lambda Client plugin named Conquest Client was released by Ancient77 in Freedom Holland. This module would automatically start highway tools and rotate the player. When it detected a player was out of obsidian, it would mine a block in the ceiling, place an ender chest, take an obsidian shulker, place and refill a player's inventory automatically, then continue the process. The refilling module had to be worked out due to a legal placement interaction being patched by the owner of 2B2T. Housemaster. On September 12th, the project's progress in its entirety was leaked on 2B2T subreddit by Conquest leader Wazy. This resulted in the private logistics discord being cleaned of most members, with only the most trustworthy, dedicated players remaining. This was the final straw that caused the split between Conquest and the remaining placers, among other reasons such as poor leadership and overall lack of structure within Conquest. Out of 800 plus members in the Conquest Discord, only 9 players were dedicated to finishing the project. Ice Tank, Reaper's Patrol, Fujisauce, Yadok, Dragon Snake 9000, Quaz, Ski, Ancient 77, and Not No More. These players combined forces with a private group to begin work on the project. Progress was carried out and documented in absolute secrecy from here on out leading most of the 2B2C community to believe that the project had died out for good. The next day, the last mining station associated with Conquest gets blown up and raided after being incited, further adding to the notion that the project was dead. For the following few days, progress with bots was further developed. Bots were mainly hosted on free tiers off Linode VPS servers. 29 accounts were eventually added to the VPS. Only a few bots were used for paving, and the others were used to automate mining Obsidian fully. The bots would download the areas they were in, and then upload them to a central server. That server could then generate a map of every block in the 10k square. Ice Tank later added a system where you can message the bot to walk to specific locations. The group would use this to resupply Obsidian to spawn. On September 18th, Freedom Hauling confirms with Conquest members that the project is dead. This was the first case of gaslighting, and other higher up Conquest members and I would either stay silent or say that the project was dead, making the group officially name it Project Dead. 
but this was the furthest thing from the truth. The group was making amazing progress in such a short amount of time. However, on September 22nd, one of the mining stations was found and griefed. But a day later, a new mining station called Bumblebee Base began construction. Once the sectors got closer and closer to spawn, the group became worried that they would get attention from outside players. Only a few days later, Negative Entropy, a member of the Spawn Masons, visited Dragonsnake 9000 while paving the roof in Sector G1, and both of his paving accounts were combat logged. On September 28th, the group officially called themselves the Spectrum Builders. With the help of paving and mining bots, their progress only got faster. On October 8th, the mining bots were complete. They had enough obsidian to reprogram all mining bots to pave, which sped up the project's progress exponentially. Two days later, a player named Spinkle visits Dragonsnake 9000 while paving and helps place a few blocks of obsidian, the first instance of a random player helping. Another encounter was when a player named M. Busto visited Reaper's patrol and they would fight for 10 minutes before Reaper logged out due to lack of armor. On October 20th, the packaging bot was finally done after packaging nearly 70 million obsidian. Finally, on October 23rd, 2022, Spectrum Builders finished the last big cluster of the obsidian roof. In 68 days, Fuji Sauce, Reaper's Patrol, Dragonsnake 9000, Ice Tank, Yik Yu, Not No More, XQ, Freedom Holland, Ancient 77, 6WJ, Ski, Yodic, Quaz, and I placed a total of 58,885,764 obsidian. The Spawn Mason's logo provided 28,154,762 obsidian, showing the scale of its massive size. The last 30 million obsidian was from other obsidian logos. The Spectrum Builders wanted to add a structure that was holding up the roof, so they created four 110,000 block Obsidian Atlas statues built on each axis to hold up the roof. Anton, Not No More, Reaper's Patrol, Freedom Holland, Ice Tank, and XQ made these. On the final day of the project, we all met up at spawn and threw a party. What started from just an idea became a reality. Many players thought this would be impossible, yet when you have dedicated players who are driven for a goal, nothing will stop them. When I started this project, I did not expect the number of advancements and friendships that were made along the way. Obsidian placement is now more structured, and there are now programs that allow players or bots to place logos without being on your PC. I've watched the Spectrum Builders create a stronger bond with each other, and it's cool to see how just one project may spark many more adventures and advancements on the server.